Hello, welcome once again. As you saw before, I did videos on alternators, how to measure outputs, and I'll make more of those. But I think to go back to backtrack, we really have to understand the internal of an alternator. For this, we have to go to textbook. You cannot draw things on a, on a blackboard like I've seen on other channels. It, it defeats the whole purpose. Sometimes you need a textbook. The stator in a rotor is the stationary windings and the rotor is the one that turns, a coil that turns. It produces an AC field. This goes through, I made a video about what a diode does. A diode changes AC to DC. There are six diodes usually. Now, let's take it a step further. Same thing applies over here. Here's internally what's inside uh, an alternator. Notice one thing, we spoke about regulator. Regulator, purpose of regulator, keep the voltage constant when you put the accessories on and a different engine load conditions. This is the regulator right here. The dotted line is right here, the regulator with transistors and a Zener diode. Now, not to get too technical, over here, you have the regulator inside. Sometimes you're gonna have the regulator on the outside, and what's the regulator gonna be? A computer board. The PCM is gonna control the on and off times of the generator, of the field, of the rotor. Here, it's inside. You're only gonna see a B plus coming out. Let's understand it even more. We said this is the AC, right? Rotor is turning, this is the stator, which is the stationary winding creates an AC. AC goes in here into these diodes. One side goes to the ground. The body of it, the metal of it, you see, is the ground. But over here you see something, a capacitor going to ground. This capacitor goes to ground is needed. First of all, you want to block. It's going, this, if you look at it, it's going back to the battery. We don't want AC going to the battery. We only want DC going to the battery. To the battery. So any AC will go this way to the capacitor. Now, the capacitor will also charge, obviously, to the voltage, whatever the battery is, whatever this output is. So we have this DC output. So we have this AC that's created. It's, that's why it's called an AC generator. It's a three-phase generator. Each sine wave will be um, 90 degrees out with the other one. Doesn't matter to our point. Main thing is we have an AC generator and this is rotating, it's like the rotor and it creates, there's a magnetic field, that magnetic field creates an AC voltage over here. That AC voltage at times could be very high, over 200 volts, that's how we need to maintain it. The voltage part of it. Now we come over here and it goes to the battery, fine. So this is the B plus that we always see going to the battery. The battery also gives DC to our regulator the internal regulator which is in the alternator it's packed in there you need dc to bias this is a zena diode this is a, a a voltage regulator a zena diode turns on the transistor this transistor will turn on this transistor and guess what look at where the outputs go this will be a variable resistor this will change resistance as it conducts more or less and guess what it goes through here, through this winding of the rotor, and come right back over here as a bias to this, to turn this on and off. That's why this keeps it here, and this will change according to the resistance, either more current or less current. That's what's going on. I don't want to get too technical. Again, I don't want to lose the viewers. Basically, this is what's in there. Those were times when the regulator was inside. Now, times have changed. Now it's computerized. We take this dotted line, we take this regulator out, what do you think we're gonna put in its place? You guessed it, a computer module. That computer module will go to this winding over here and control it on and off times. Instead of a current, instead of in changing the, the resistance of this, uh, like, like acting like a transistor, it'll turn this on and off, on and off at a set frequency. By doing that, the computer will control the current output. Go to my um, channel, before I end, a Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. You saw what I did. I'm going to make other videos about the alternator. I still left quite a bit out. I want to make it in, in parts because sometimes people maybe 
If I do a whole video, 30 minutes long, maybe they'll, they'll, they won't be interested. I do certain parts and then whatever you want, you, you watch instead of skipping through the whole thing. Um, anyway, that's that part. Here we go again, the current regulator, what we talked about. The current regulator over here goes to the rotor windings. Same thing, this, except this is, this is P, PNP, this is PNP. The other one's NPN, doesn't make a difference. Anyway, anyway, there's a sensor over here. Now, there's something called pulse width modulation. If, you, if your alternator has 100 amps, and you saw in that example, I had all the accessories on, almost all. I was cranking 45 amps. That's close to 50% capacity of that alternator. If you look at the videos, the last one with the clamp meter, with the headlights, with uh, the, the with the um, uh, blower motor on, with the, with the radio on full audio, I was it was giving about 45 amps until I turned everything off. Went to, down to about 20, 22, I'm not, something like that. It's a pulse width modulation. It turns it on and off, on and off, according to the load conditions. If you're at 50%, you're drawing about 50, 50 amps of your alternator. If you're at 75% pulse width, you're drawing about 75 amps of your 100 amp rated alternator. That's how that works. Let's take that all the way. Now let's get to the main, main point what we started this whole video about. We had a regulator over here, you remember? That was the regulator I showed you uh, over here. We took this out. Do you see a regulator in here? This is the alternator. Do you see a regulator in here? No, no regulator. What do you see in here? You see the AC generator, right? You see the windings. You see the diodes, the six diodes that are in here, right? And you see the rotors over here, the field rotors over here. Now, you see the ground also. And what else do you see before the ground? You see a capacitor. You need that. If that capacitor shorts out, you're in trouble. So... The alternator, the alternator has to have some form of regulation to keep the to keep the battery constant. Remember, there are some alternators, usually you think about 14 volts. Sometimes there are smart alternators in, in modern cars, 16 volts is, is, is normal for them. So you can't go also by 15 or 16 volts. In these cars, 50, 16, uh, 50 volts is too much, but the, the modern ones are smart. Alternators are coming and all these things. 16 volts is, is sometimes acceptable. You have to know the specifications. The other thing is if you're 12.5 volts at 12.5 volts at your, your battery voltage, you should be about two volts higher. So you should be about roughly 14 volts output. When you put all the accessories on, you should be about 0.5 volt more than your battery. So if your battery was 12.5, 0.5 volts more than that is 13 volts. You should be roughly around 13, but I like to see it very steady at 14. Besides that point, besides uh, speaking that much, we took out the regulator and we put this uh, PCM. What does PCM do? Battery, look at all the lines, the, the connectors. A battery terminal te temperature signal, it monitors the temperature of the battery. Sometimes it gets very, very hot. In, a, in the summertime, in the flower, wherever it is, that battery gets hot, right? The voltage regulator signal is this one. The battery sense signal, there's a battery sense signal to sense also the battery voltage, not only the temperature, right? And there's an ignition feed over here that you have to go and give 12 volts to the lines, whatever needs it. So, in a nutshell, look what we look what we replaced before we had a regulator inside. Look what we have now. Now we have the power modulator. Whenever you see F2, F1, those are going to the field, to the field rotors to control the current. So you see this going in here, it's a F2, going into one side of the field terminals, as it says comes out the other side f1 cf1 the blue line comes out here and goes out here so this is controlling from here to here it's controlling the field rotors by on and off not like a variable resistor like the transistor was but when we when this computer turns it on and off on and off at a certain frequency 400 frequency whatever it 400 hertz whatever it is it's controlling the output current 
Where's the DC over here? Where do you see the DC? Remember we spoke about diodes. Here's the diodes, here's the output. Right here is the B plus line. The B plus line, let me zoom out. Guess where it goes to? The battery. Okay? Again, this is, this is, uh, um, uh, what's it called? This is the, the, the module, the computer module working. Whenever you see the lines of connectors, a connector F1, F2, or L, whatever, you have a computer involved. The computer is regulating the output. Okay? It's, and it's external. It's external. That's why you need a connector in the first place to it, right? Anyway, I wanted you to understand what's going on. So anyway, the DC is coming out here and feeding this through these diodes. So now at least you understand what's going on. And the computer is controlling the output. Remember that. Very important to, to, to know. These are computerized cars. There's a voltmeter that you see in your gauge. That gauge is, is measuring the voltage, the battery, and the alternator output. I'll show you an example. And therefore, through the ignition switch, whenever you're in, a, you're in accessories or you're in start or run, it's going through the ignition switch. This is the, it's like you putting a voltmeter across this. I'll show you the example. Here's the example. Here's a voltmeter going through the ignition switch, going through, guess what, the alternator output, and going through the battery. It's like a voltmeter across them, it's like the splice. So what happens? Let's say you, you lose the alternator. The voltmeter will still be running as long as you have the ignition switch running, right? And it'll measure the battery. So let's say you are at 14 volts, right? This broke, or the alternator just cracked out on you, right? What's it going to measure the voltmeter? You're going to measure this. Whatever the battery is, if it's 11 volts or 10 volts, that's what you're going to measure. So that's why it's important to make sure your serpentine belt is not, doesn't have cracks on it and the ribs. Make sure it's working properly because if your serpentine br bl belt breaks, not only forget about the compressor, but the air conditioner, it's a luxury. Power steering will go. Water pump will go, right? Everything will go, right? And you know what will happen? You will be surviving on the battery whatever that is in a limp mode condition i call it and it's called the reserve capacity of the battery now you're living on forget about the alternator at 14 volts you're living strictly on this uh, so if you have the accessories on you should turn them off whatever you don't have that much left maybe 20 minutes whatever i don't know depends it's called a limp mode so it'll get you home limping right it's an emergency right now so therefore the point the point being that the reserve capacity does not last that long even some some vehicles gms whatever it is they will cut off when it's in a limp mode or you lose the alternator cut off some accessories like the air conditioning or other accessories it will cut them off so if you can't use those accessories like uh the rear window defog or whatever it is you'll know why that's because you're limited you're just running on the battery this just crapped out or the wire broke whatever it is that's what's connected to both now let's say the battery is good right let's say the battery is good but all of a sudden you're at 14 volts and then all of a sudden all of a sudden i lost this one so you still measure whatever this is either one whatever whatever one if this breaks or craps out you'll measure this one if this craps, you'll measure this one. That's what's going to splice. Anyway, please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. You see some some things you have to go to a textbook. Like I see the other channel, you, you know, you go and you have your blackboard in the garage, and then you draw all these schematics. And uh, can you draw this? Can you can you draw this? Is this possible for you to draw this? Of course not. Don't forget the light also that goes on. Once this has a B plus, the B plus we said is coming out from here, right? Going to this. From the DC, then this light will go on. Once this, once you turn on the DC, you turn on the engine, this light will go on. Then this will go off. This will go off. I think I said the opposite. This will go off. So therefore, one more time, you 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 start your engine. The light is always on. Look at the light. Once you get the serpentine bell, the everything cranking and all that, the pulleys and everything, you get DC. This should go out. If this does not go out, you have a problem with your charging system, okay? Most likely, okay? So I hope this helped. Please go to my videos. I need seven, uh, no, no, actually, uh, I think uh, 14,000 more watch time. That's why I'm producing so much. Anyway, my watch minutes has been pretty good. Actually, almost uh, 40,000 
uh, the past two months, pretty good. And, um, and other things. So anyway, please go to those 